Chemistry lecture number 41, Shapes of Molecules. We can predict the arrangement of terminal atoms attached to the central atom of a molecule using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR theory. And this states that pairs of valence electrons on the central atom will be arranged in space to put the greatest distance between the electrons. As a result, molecules will take distinctive shapes. Beryllium, for example, normally forms uh, ionic bonds with nonmetals, but it will form covalent, bo <coughs> excuse me, covalent bonds with group 7 elements. And below is a Lewis diagram of uh, beryllium chloride. And notice I draw these arrows indicating that these pairs of electrons that are in between the atoms want to move away from each other. So beryllium forms two bonds, each of them with chlorine. Each bond has a pair of electrons. The shape that puts the greatest distance between the bonds is a straight line or linear shape. And thus a molecule will have a linear shape if two terminal atoms are attached to the central atom. The bond angle is 180 degrees. All right, so that bond wants to get away from that bond. This is the shape that puts the greatest distance between the bonds. Aluminum and gallium will form covalent bonds with group seven elements. Um, below is a Lewis diagram of uh, gallium fluoride, probably gallium trifluoride. And notice the little arrows I drew here. This bond wants to get away from this bond. This bond wants to get away from this bond. So they push away from each other. So the shape that puts the greatest distance between the bonds is a triangle shape. Uh, the triangle that is formed is a flat triangle that sits on a single plane. And this shape is called trigonal planar, and the angle between the bonds is 120 degrees. So anytime you have three terminal atoms attached to a central atom, it gives a trigonal planar shape. So here's an example of a trigonal planar shape. This is just a flat triangle. So you've got the gallium in the center, and then the uh, fluorines attached to each side. So you just get a flat triangle. And there is a Lewis structure for methane, and there are four bonds in this molecule. Uh, the diagram shows a flat molecule, and the bonds appear to be at right angles to each other. Uh, is this sh the shape that puts the greatest distance between the bonds? Yes, in two dimensions. We live in a three-dimensional world. Uh, the bonds can point up and down, left and right, in two dimensions. In three dimensions, it can also point forward and back. The bonds can be spaced further apart if we take advantage of the forward and backward directions. So that is the actual shape of uh, methane. <clears throat> so we have bonds going you know, up and down and kind of left and right, but we also have a bond coming out towards us. This long, thin triangle is a bond coming towards you and a bond going away from you. So this sort of dashed line here represents a bond going away from you. Um, this length right here, that's the bond length. We don't have to worry about that, um, but we're interested in the bond angle. And notice that the bond angle is 109.5 degrees, which is bigger than the 90 degrees we'd get if we just drew a, a flat two-dimensional structure. And then here is a uh, tetrahedral shape. So you notice that the bonds are not at right angles to each other. Okay. Oops. Lost my bonds there. All right. Got another one for you. I just this one I made out of uh, styrofoam. But you should see that these bonds here are greater than 90 degrees. Oops. I, mean, I didn't exactly do this right, but you get the general idea of the shape. Okay. <clears throat> Here's another one, NH3 ammonia. So what will be the shape of uh, this molecule? Oh, wait a minute, let me backtrack a little bit. So uh, this is a tetrahedral shape. You'll get a tetrahedral shape if you have four terminal atoms attached to the central atom. Okay, so a tetrahedral central atom has four atoms attached to it. All right, <clears throat> now what will be the shape of this molecule? Uh, this has three terminal atoms attached to the central atom, so you might think that it'll have this shape, a trigonal uh, planar shape. But NH3 also has a pair of unshared electrons on the nitrogen, right here, these two dots. So these electrons push down on the other bonds, giving it a shape like a pyramid. And that's the shape of it, it's called trigonal pyramidal. This is the bond length, we don't have to worry about this, and this is the bond angle right here. <clears throat> now, 
Molecules will take this shape if there's a pair of unshared electrons on the central atom and three terminal atoms are attached. So you'll get a pyramid sort of shape. So it's like the, uh, it's like this shape only with the top one cut off. So that's the uh, shape. It's different. See, this one is just a flat molecule. This one is shaped like a pyramid. Okay, so you see how it sort of has a pyramid shape. All right. And it's shaped like a triangle on the bottom, but it is shaped like a pyramid. Okay. Okay, so molecules will take the shape if there's a pair of unshared electrons on the central atom and three terminal atoms attached to it. <clears throat> I've got another diagram like that, so that might give you a better idea of the three-dimensional shape it has. Okay, so it's a three-dimensional shape. Now there's a Lewis diagram, <coughs> excuse me, of water. Um, so you have these two pairs of electrons here. They're going to push down on these bonds right here. So the two sets of unpaired electrons on the oxygen will push down on the bonds, preventing the molecule from having a linear shape. So below, that's the actual shape of uh, water, H2O. Bond angle is 104 degrees. The name of the shape is bent. So that is the shape of a water molecule. It's not going to be a straight line, but it's going to be bent. So a molecule will have a bent shape when the central atom has uh, one or more pairs of unshared electrons and two terminal atoms attached to the central atom. PCL5 is a molecule <clears throat> where phosphorus has an expanded octet. Uh, phosphorus will be surrounded by three chlorine atoms on the same plane and two additional chlorine atoms above and below the phosphorus. So here's the central atom, five atoms attached to it. So these three are all on the same plane. And you have one attached above and one attached below. <clears throat> so uh, you have a trigonal bipyramidal shape when you have five terminal atoms attached to the central atom. And let's see if I can get this picture to work out. Ugh, okay, there we go. So this is the trigonal bipyramidal shape. All right, so you have three uh, chlorines surrounding the phosphorus in the middle, and then you have one above and one below. So these three are in the same plane. This is one above and one below. It's being put together with taffy, so they're all bending. So there we go. There's our model. All right. So you get this shape when the central atom has five atoms attached to it. Okay. Let's get another shape. <clears throat> So when five terminal atoms are attached to the central atom, the shape is trigonal bipyramidal. Bond angle between some adjacent chlorine atoms are 120 degrees, other angles are 90 degrees. So most of these angles are 90 degrees. The angles right here, that's gonna be 120 degrees because it's gonna form a triangle. <coughs> SF6 has an atom with an expanded octet. <coughs> when six terminal atoms are attached to the central atom, the name of the shape is octahedral. So that's the octahedral shape. So you have the central atom, and you have four atoms attached to it on the same plane, and then one above and one below. So anytime you have six terminal atoms attached to the central atom, you'll have an octahedral shape. And oh, let's see if I can. Oh, what a mess here. Let's see. That one goes up. I'm putting together my model. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay, hold on. Alrighty. And that is our tetrahedral shape. Alright, so you're going to have one, two, three, 
four atoms surrounding in the same plane, and then one above and one below. So if I can keep this from changing shape as I spin it, we'll <laughs> do that. So this is the octahedral shape. Okay. Right. Can you see that? All right. Now there are many more different types of shape, but I think for high school level chemistry, that's enough shapes. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 41, Shapes of Molecules.